Salutations, everyone! Welcome back to EU4. It's been a while from a guide for me, but today we're going to be covering Molly. So, just for fun and practice, I did the Molly run here twice before doing this video. So, um, these are my experiences and how to do it. So, first off, Molly starts in Sub-Saharan Africa as one of the uh, more dominant states here with Songhai. The problem is Molly at the very start of the game will trigger this decline of Mali event. One national unrest, stability, caravan power, and monthly autonomy change. It is an absolute nightmare. Arguably, I think Mali is probably in the top 10 hardest starts right now, if not near the top. It's extremely brutal. Um, you will have rebels pop up um, between 9 and 15 uh, stacks constantly popping up through your lands. And the, many of them will either be independent separatists, the peasant ones are easy to deal with, but the most annoying ones are the ones with the states, because when they revolt, they will usually increase your loyalty with one, decrease it with another, and that causes problems to how to stabilize Mali. So, this is going to be a slightly oddly structured video, in the sense that we're going to be jumping back and forth between stuff. So if we have any clear sections, I'll um, tag them below and you can jump to them with timestamps. But otherwise, it's going to be pretty comprehensively all tied together. So um, if you're expecting timestamps, you might not find many. So the first thing as Molly you have to deal with is this disaster. It's going to fire. You can't do anything about it. Um, it's an absolute pain. Um, it also has some other effects too. Um, it also increases liberty desire for subjects and stuff. So uh, it's not shown here. I don't know why. Maybe it triggers right afterwards. But I had it both times I did it. And it basically means trying to maintain control of subjects while this disaster is going is nigh on impossible. So how to solve this disaster? You have to get all the way down here to restore Mali authority to end the disaster. This is something you probably won't accomplish in... Eh, Theoretically, you could do it really fast, but the odds are you won't be able to do it for about 100 years, which means you're going to have to find a way to deal with all the disasters. Thankfully, here on the right are ways to make the disaster less painful. The first one, pretender rebels will no longer revolt when a new mansa, which is your ruler, is crowned, followed by give estates favors, estates will remain loyal to Mali. This is the most important one to hit because it will stop most... Uh, of your revolts in your land and allow you to actually stabilize and grow. And then handle the Kabu people is relatively easy, but um, it will allow any province that's a core of another country will remain loyal to you. So right now, <laughs> you've got Kabu having a core province. Um, you have Segu having a core province. Right now, it doesn't exist. Um, and then there's other events that can pop up at times. But if Segu appears, all of a sudden all these provinces up here, which are cores, will start revolting on you. Now when I say revolting, they won't revolt just once. They'll revolt multiple times over periods of years. And they will likely obliterate your manpower. Um, thankfully, we have ways to deal with it. But let's start from the top. Let's get rid of this event. So in order to do get rid of the Pretender Rebels, we need... Molly gaining six of each stat a month. We have an absolutely terrible ruler, and we have a terrible heir. So one of the first steps, fire that heir. It's not worth having. A 1-1-1 a one, one, one heir is arguably, well, it's three away from the worst type of heir you can have. The average is eight. Um, your ruler is absolutely terrible. Thankfully, he does have some advisor cost reduction, but um, at least in my game, I think it's randomized. But his stats aren't. He's absolutely terrible. So we have to get all of these to six. We have one at four, two at three. So the easy way to get it there, and it's up to you if you want to do this immediately. I recommend it, trying to get to the second mission as soon as possible. It's very hard to complete the second mission, though. So the easy way to do it is you hire advisors. You literally just take loans, and you hire level two advisors everywhere. Uh, if you can get advisors that give you money, tax, trade efficiency, uh, land maintenance reduction, all of those will help. You could also take uh, any discipline or morale advisor you see, 
But make sure for now that you take level twos, even if you see a better one at level one. Now that's got us to six on one, five on the other. This involves states, and this is going to be the most painful period of your run the first 50 years. You could wait, but if you wait, then things get worse and worse and worse and worse. So might as well try and push for it. So one of the first things you want to do is you want to go into your emirs and your merchant guilds and give them diplomatic power. And that will allow you to immediately complete the decline of Mali. Now, on the other hand, you have almost no crown land, you have tons of problems, and the liberty from subject development is super high. However, to solve the estates, you only have to get them to 60. And you have ways of doing that. Uh, if you go under the emirs, supremacy over the crown, right of council, that will get them to 59. The ulema here, um, oversight will get them to 51. So you have to find ways to get them some more. Uh, you've got options down here. Religious schools, scholars are free. That's always a solid one to take as a Muslim nation. And if you want, you can do religious diplomats, and that will get you to 60 there over time. None of this is immediate, which is the hard part. Merchant guilds, um, let's see, free enterprise, that will get you to 46. Uh, private trade fleets will get you to 50, almost 52-ish. Uh, it's a little lower because we disinherited the air. We're looking at the equilibrium is currently, we want to get that to 60. So the way we can get to it here is give them a monopoly. We'll give them a monopoly on the smallest thing we have. Same thing for the emirs. Um, monopoly on mining and smelting only affects iron and copper. Thankfully, most of Mali's wealth is through gold. So that isn't a huge effect. And we don't actually care about the Dominion states at all. However, I do recommend you give them uh, at least liberties. And if you can, give them guarantee. Uh, don't give them... <laughs> don't give them guaranteed autonomy unless you want uh, to be completely tolerant of... Um, Fetishist zealots, uh, fetishism, fetishists, uh, but definitely give them the higher taxes. Um, don't do the conscripts, even if it's tempting, because it does lose you crown land, and your crown land sucks. Now, if you've done this right, all of these will build up to 60 over time. The trick is to try and get to them as soon as possible. And if you're really lucky, you can do it fast. If you're unlucky, you have trouble. First off, call the diet. And if you're lucky, you find one uh, like I've got here. Well, this is unfortunately the mini. Um, it would be better if this was the Emirs or something. For now, um, I, I guess I would take this one just because I have to take something. And then I can always dev to get that done and get a little more manpower, which is nice. The big key is I've got everything to 55. So hopefully, as we process time forward... Um, We'll hit 60 rather fast, can solve that disaster and move on. We'll see if it happens. I can't guarantee it does. Afterwards, strengthening this province is pretty easy. You just have to get it to level 15 and um, accept the culture. And um, you actually have to get it to 16, if I remember, because currently it is 9 away, um, or 17 actually. So you have to build it up a bit more. Because you're going to have to dev it to 15 at minimum, so 7, but you need 9. So theoretically, you could dev this province if you want to. I just dev the same province. Um, and that's how you do that there. And hopefully that would solve your problems. Now, on the other tree here, this is one of your more crucial ones. This is one of the semi-annoying Leviathans. Choose your own past. You'll get an event within the first couple years of the game. I'll try and um, get it up. When it appears and you can choose to either be tolerant of heretics or um, devoted to sunni islam honestly i would kind of recommend you go for the sunni islam uh, it's pretty easy to convert your whole region as mali and if you do you'll get um, a modifier that gives you additional missionary strength and stuff at the cost of being less tolerant of heathens but uh, mali is extremely tolerant plus if you keep your domini happy they will um, give you tolerance as well. So uh, just start converting 
uh, any province, really, um, you can afford to do it. If you want to spend any other money on stuff, you could develop one of your gold mines. So you start with the uh, Bambuk and Burr gold mines. Out of the two, the Burr is a much safer one to develop. Um, it's of your culture, so you have you have full acceptance of it. Um, and it's located right on an impassable terrain, meaning it's difficult for armies to get to unless they pop up in the settlement. So throwing one development to that is pretty decent. Uh, you can't, unfortunately, raise your stability, and in fact, you're going to be negative stability for some time. So that is the setup there. If you've got any questions, be sure to put them below. However, we're looking at now the middle tree. The middle tree is all about your conquest, and I want to emphasize, I recommend you try and solve the gain of state favors before you start your conquests, if you can. If you can't, it's a lot harder, but you need to move relatively quickly so that someone, for example, Song Hai, which you have to take out to complete your decline, restoring the empire, doesn't get too strong. So what I recommend is this first one here, rulers are general, legitimacy of 90, total army size 100% of the force limit. Sounds easy. However, I do not, and I repeat, do not recommend you use your main army to complete this mission. If you want, and this is the one time you could do it, is you can build up your army completely. However, you're going to run out of manpower after like the fourth or fifth revolt of the rebels. It's just unfortunately the reality of it. Make your ruler a general, because if he dies, literally any other ruler would be better, even if you have low legitimacy. But what I do recommend is as you move forward, you hire mercenaries. Specifically, this uh, Dahomey Amazons is a pretty good one, as well as um, this Asfo company, if you can afford it. And Mali is r really rich in terms of army. Um, uh, you can support multiple mercenaries as long as you develop these gold mines a little bit. You're going to be struggling with income for quite a while until you can correct this crownland problem. That is unfortunate. Fortunately, the reality of Mali's start, we want to try and solve the disaster as fast as we can. It is super tempting to seize Crownland. Um, however, that just messes up your chance of succeeding quickly. However, <laughs> I keep getting I keep forgetting to mention this. However, if you start getting events that massively lower your loyalty within a state, by all means, seize the crown land, try and correct this problem, and then over time, you'll just have to hope you get to 60 through events and stuff. So let's quickly uh, um, set up the... Oh, shoot. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's set up some alliances. So after we complete this mission here, we're going to get a subjugation claim on Jolof here. However, by the time we're able to attack them, which of course involves raising the army and everything, they are likely to ally two or even three other nations. In my runs, I saw them have a large tendency to ally, well, Timbuktu up here, who is about as strong as you are, or Kong or Jenny. It Ideally, they ally Jenny, because if they do, one of your next missions here is to conquer the uh, to Jenny's capital here. Um and get the Great Mosque, which is helps with your conversion. On the other hand, you won't have the strength to fight either one of them individually, and I don't recommend you do. How I recommend you do your conquest is you ally Songhai. If Al Songhai hates you, uh, you're in a little bit of trouble. But I tend to ally Songhai, get a royal marriage with the Atenga, and if you can, try and ally Wagadu or another one on this area. Kong is... A decent ally, except for the fact they tend to ally uh, Jolof or Timbuktu. Um, Jenny hates you usually, as does Timbuktu. And the less said about these guys, the better, because they almost always despise you. But Songhai is the big prize. What you want to do is then devote a diplomat to currying favors with them. They will build up to around uh, anywhere between 15 and 20 troops, which combined with your army, made up probably by mercenaries at that point, you can easily overrun one or two enemies because Songhai is militarily very powerful. 
They have that infantry combat army yearly traditions. You, on the other hand, have no combat ability until the middle of your tree, which kind of sucks, and the end. So you're going to be relying on allies to win your wars initially. Jolof here, you get subjugation on them. Once you subjugate them, they're still going to hate you, let's be honest. Anyhow, I'm going to jump forward in time now, and hopefully uh, I can show you some of the events and solutions. Like day like 10 or something, Islamization of the Aristocracy. We can not rock the boat, which unlocks the tolerance mission, and you gain a stability. So it makes your existence safer in the short run, is not as good in the long run. So let us convert your people, our people, I would recommend. First, you gain some legalism, which is, of course, the Muslim Sunni mechanic. You gain some reform, which is nice, but the big thing is more missionary strength. And it immediately allows you to complete this mission. And then if you manage to convert all of your lands, you can then finish this one, which if you're in trouble, this will, having trouble of getting your Luma, Ulema um, loyalty high enough, this will give you the way to do that because it'll boost it by 15%. In my experience, the priests are the hardest to keep happy. Now you've got your piety here. It is kind of debatable which is the best way to go early on. I recommend legalism for most of the game. The money, the manpower, and more importantly, the tech cost is unbelievably good. In the short run, if you're fighting wars, mysticism can be pretty decent. It will speed up your conversion, but don't worry, your conversion is already pretty decent. And if you really wanted to double down on it, you could give them religious culture, which would help convert more land. On the other hand, your uh, fetish lands will be a lot more unhappy. It's up to you. Okay, the decline of Mali has fired. We lose a stability. That is just unfortunately the reality of the situation. And from now on, it's a race to Saul restore the authority before our empire collapses. Okay, so things have moved on a little bit, but here's one of the things I wanted to mention, which is this scandal in Mali. This is an event from the decline. It will fire fairly often, and it will cause you to lose a stability. As you'll notice, we're already negative two. We still haven't even gotten enough Mali, uh, monarch points to stabilize it. Um, if we had gone fetish tolerance, we'd be slightly more stable, and there would be less religious unity problems. On the other hand, we wouldn't have converted as much of uh, be able to convert our lands as fast. Okay, I have gotten all the requirements to complete Mansa to arms and subjugate. However, Jolof has allied both Jenny and Timbuktu, a 10, a 10, and an 8, respectively, for 28. We have no hope of beating them with our 16 forces, so we do not want to take this mission because the subjugation only lasts 10 years. I recommend doing subjugation rather than conquest, unless you've managed to handle the Kabu people first. And we've already allied Songhai, started our relations with them, allied Yatenga, and in fact, this time around, it looks like we can ally both Kong and Bonobin. So I will do that on both. Okay, so here is the first of many revolts. Peasants rise up in Doe. They pop up. Thankfully, this time it's peasants, so we can easily move in and crush them. But it is going to be a reoccurring theme. And as you can see, building up our full army, we already are suffering on the manpower department. Having your army sit here, definitely put on um, auto rebel suppression. It'll just make life a little bit easier. But at some point, you'll probably have to re uh, resort to mercenaries. Sadly, you're tech 2, so you cannot drill your armies. So you can't use slack and standards to get manpower. So you need other sources of manpower in this game. A option is if you want to increase levies, we'll get you 17% more manpower at the cost of tax and the fact you can't steal back land from them and they're your, by far your biggest landholder. So I really don't re recommend you take this unless you want to try to use armies rather than mercenaries. Okay. Okay, here's another event. Kabu de demands independence. 16 separatists rise up in Gabu. This happens. Um, unless somehow you've managed to um, 
stop, get this disaster already. Uh, solve this, uh, sorry, mission already. So they shall die for their independence. You're probably going to have to manually order your army to march into them. However, we've now, and I forgot to do this, we have in fact gotten all, We've since we've completed the first level mission of getting to six in all stats, we can in fact fire and reduce these to start making money again. Um, if you need it, to lack an advisor, lack the Diplo advisor. At this point, it's less impress important to be able to stabilize, which we've done once, and um, raise generals and stuff. Now, just because our ruler is a general does not mean we have to use him. It's better to hire someone else so you don't risk the stability loss. Now, moving into Cantor is better than attacking Gabu in general. Um, if they come to you, you tend to do better than if you go to them. Now, we got lucky this run, and we have managed to hit 60 loyalty without any of the state rebels popping up. So we take that, and we are now stabilized. Just like that. Kind of crazy. And once we suppress the rebels, we'll start getting crown lands, and we should be good. Let's see. In fact, we lost here. Now that is a problem. That is a big problem, as a matter of fact, because we barely have enough manpower to rebuild once. However, we've stopped most of the other rebels from popping up, so we actually have a decent shot at um, not having to hire tens of mercenaries this run, which is unusual. However, we don't have enough to beat them right now, so it might be worth to raise some additional troops to help us. You notice I'm using mercenaries rather than anything else because mercenaries have their own mana, um, manpower pool. If we're lucky, we can force them to come back to attack us because they want to unify their culture group. And this is one of their culture provinces. This is where having a morale or discipline advisor would be very useful. Unfortunately, I didn't roll one at the start of the game. I think we will probably win this, but we'll see. Honestly, it'd be nice if I had a better general, too. And we did. There we go. So now, if we want to, we could fire the uh, mercenaries. Which would argue probably be a smart idea at this point. And uh, you'll notice we're entirely out of manpower. And thankfully, we avoided the very nasty estate rebels that pop up. And um, we're almost um, as stable as we can be, regardless from actually stopping the disaster. Um, for events like this, where you conversion, uh, you want to take the conversion, even if it does move you towards mysticism. And just like that, we're stable on that front. We'll see some land here. It won't solve the problem. The next milestone is 20, then 30 stops all these negative events, but... What can you do? And in terms of rivals, the only one we really... We want to rival all three of these. I didn't rival them earlier because I didn't want to risk them joining an alliance, but it turns out they did already. We already have enough favors with Songhai. We could call them into a war. We still don't have enough with the others. We want to call in a large alliance and let them do the fighting when the time comes. But let's finish off the hardest part of the mission tree, or one of the harder ones, and build this one up. So, that is still just a little shy of what we need. We need five more. So if you wanted to do it efficiently, the efficient way would be to develop the other province as well. And we got a good air. Oh, nice. Okay, and just like that, we have solved all the major decline of Mali problems. So the only thing left for us to deal with is uh, um, the standard unrest, stability, caravan power, monthly autonomy, peasant revolts that will happen, and the very annoying uh, like crisis in Mali where you lose a stability. It's hard to stay above one stability as Mali am. Uh, stay above negative one. It seems to trigger and send you back to negative one a lot. 
But we're sitting in the position where outside of being totally out of manpower, um, which we could solve by converting most of our army to mercenaries, we have the ability to start to expand because we have our allies on our side. So what you would do if you were doing the rest is you'd hire free company or ideally the Amazons I find are a better company to hire. We have enough to to Mansa to arms, at which point we can launch this war and call in our allies. However, I do want to point this out. Songhai wants some of Jene's lands. If you can, and it's tricky, you want to occupy Sa and you want to focus down Jene before Songhai does. And if you can, you want to get to Tenbuk too. So what you could try, and it's semi-tricky, is you can try making them provinces of interest, and hopefully Songhai won't get too annoyed with you, in which case you're given the two you really need. You need Jene, and you need Timbuktu as a core. Now, this mission here, Appease the Bambara, is really easy to do. You just basically get your development in this province to 15, like that, and raise autonomy. Ta -da. Now what that does for us is it gives us claims in this whole area. So taking these in a war, much cheaper, much easier, much less aggressive expansion, and more importantly, Songhai is, is somewhat more likely to actually give us the land. Now I'm not going to keep playing after this point because it's mainly conquests, so let's just talk about how to do all these. So at this point, we launched the war on Jolof. We win. We want to subject them. We want Jene. Ideally, we want Timbuktu. If you can, finish off Jene entirely. If you can't, you won't be able to take all of Timbuktu in one war unless you're extraordinarily lucky. Honestly, don't worry too much about coalitions. Um, these guys out here are not particularly angry if you're beating up other Muslims because they're fetish. So you can get away with taking quite a bit of land. Just make sure that you don't cause a huge coalition before you're ready. And be aware once you take over Timbuktu and Jene, Songhai is almost inevitably going to break your alliance with you, which means you got to be in a good enough place to then be able to fight Songhai and other allies. Ayer, Air over here, turns out to be a decent ally once you lose Songhai, because they all tend to hate Songhai. And they bring good troops and they don't tend to get killed. So once you subdue Jolof here, you'll get stability, which is nice. And um, you'll have access to this trade fleet. Don't worry about this too much. This is in the Ivory Coast trade node. You really, even though you're connect collecting from this, you'd honestly be better off not collecting from this. Because it just gets you no money. Um, to be fair, Mali is trouble with trade money, but there's no rush to create this trade fleet. This is something you want to do later uh, if you're going for, uh, for um, what is it, Abu Bakir's ambition or something, where you uh, colonize South Africa. Yeah, start Abu Bakir's the second's ambition. Start as Mali, have four colony, colonial subjects in South America. It is very difficult to do if you don't solve the disaster quickly. Um, the other one you would be going for, if you're going for achievement, is Mansa Musa to give away 10k ducats to another great power. That one just takes time. It's not that hard. So don't worry too much about these until you're ready for your first or even your second idea group. Instead, focus on the conquest. So reintegrating Songhai will fire after you conquer Jene. Basically, you need to own seven provinces in the area. Guess what? Songhai has eight provinces. Basically just wipe out Songhai, you'll complete the mission. Um, when you take over Jene, you'll get an event that it, this will go down to one because you've conquered it. You'll get an event that moves it to two, so you'll gain an extra missionary, conversion strength, and your piety will always be ticking up, which is quite nice. Then once you get up here and you retake Timbuktu, you'll get an event where you can either move your capital to Timbuktu, which I don't really recommend, uh, or you can stay down here in uh, Joma. I recommend you stay in Joma. You'll get some more development there. The reason I recommend you stay in Joma is you're going to have to dev institutions. 
And in terms of deving institutions, if we were to look at the train map modes here, right? These are steps. These are 20. These are deserts. These are 50. These are savannas. These are 15. These are jungles, which are 35. The best area to dev is actually right around your starting capital. Um, right here is going to be your best dev lands. So dev your capital first for feudalism, which you could theoretically wait to get, but it's going to take you years, like 50 years almost. You don't want that. You want to dev it originally. Uh, make sure if you can, you upgrade your center of trade to make it slightly cheaper. Turn on your edict to get 10% development. Another thing to look at is this area here, Messina, or Messina, once you take it all, if you centralize it, you can get prosperity. And if you get prosperity built up, it's 10% cheaper as well. And since you're going to probably want to develop, develop in this area, um, it's a very good um, thing to have prosperity. And that ticking monthly prosperity helps. Next province I recommend you dev is probably here. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name. Put it right next to your existing capital so the Renaissance will spread. Then for colonialism, do this province here because it's near Jenny. Or you could do Segu up here, which would be slightly more expensive to do. Um, you'll want to convert it and then culturally convert it before you swap it over. Same for here. You want to culturally convert these. You've got tons of culture groups. It's easier to culturally convert a couple on the edges and have a larger Malian culture than worry about tolerance and integration. Not a huge thing. Anyway, build here. These five right here will get you all you need to get the institutions. You're going to be spending massive amounts of monarch points, though. Be aware of that. Definitely put on your edict. Definitely try to get prosperity. Try to keep your merchants as happy as you can, because if they're happy, they decrease dev costs. If they're unhappy... They increase it. Your Dominion here will reduce your tech costs, so you can actually catch up in tech. Don't worry about getting to anything beyond Miltech 3. Honestly, the only Miltech 3 you need in early on is the military one, so you can fight Songhai, which will get uh, the military tech quicker than you. Once you get that one done, uh, focus on spending your other Monarch points to dev feudalism then get maybe one or two techs. As soon as the cost comes for Renaissance, dev the Renaissance. The only thing you want to get ahead of time on or really stay up to date on is military. Remember that if you get two techs behind uh, the third tech, you will get unbalanced research, with, which will provide corruption and will hurt your income. Once you've done all of that, you'll get reintegrating Songhai. It's just an event that will reduce separatism in the area. It means you can take over Songhai rather quickly. The next thing, restore the empire, have total development of 350. If you've already done all the conquest missions, you'll have enough land for both the Sahel and Niger regions. You'll have about 150 to 200 more dev, so you'll be close. If you've dev the institutions, you'll easily restore the empire. You do that, you gain a stability, restore Mali authority. All you have to have is two stability. You'll get one from this. Uh, hopefully at that point, you'll be getting admin points so you can dev a second one. Restore Mali authority, and you're done. Cheaper stability for the rest of the game, and monthly autonomy. And congratulations, you're nice and stable. Around the time you get close to either completing this or even just conquering Songhai, Portugal will show up, and there'll be event chains involving Portugal. None of them are super major. Just make sure you don't get any long-term negative modifiers, which you can get. Portugal tends to colonize here and down here. They tend to hate you, and they will declare war on you at some point. Um, in my experience, they declare war right around the same time I conquer Songhai, when I'm out of manpower. If you've taken over Timbuktu, and I recommend you do, Timbuktu has a fort. This is desert. Go in here and turn on uh, the edicts for increased defensiveness. Timbuktu will be your defensive stronghold. It is impossible to pass without Timbuktu falling. Get a discipline advisor, if you can, over morale. And the odds are Castile and Aragon will be joining them. In my experience, which makes it hard. Portugal is easy to fight. Spain, Castile will almost always be in a golden age. They'll have superior morale. It is extraordinarily tricky to fight them. 
Thankfully, if you keep allying the minor nations and subjugating um, them if you can, it's actually pretty easy to subjugate these guys, given time, because you'll outpace them in tech and money. Uh, you can have quite a powerful allied force. Try not to lose Timbuktu, rely heavily on mercenaries when you get low manpower, and just fight them over this area. If Timbuktu falls, um, try to retake it. It can be worth suiciding your armies into them if they're mercenaries, because they have limited manpower. The odds of you blowing through your mercenary manpower and your own are little to none. Uh, if you can, Scorch Earthing through here. You'll get an event to colonize the Tuat up here. Um, if you can get a unit up here at the start of the war, and it might be worth just stationing a solitary Spearman unit up here. Um, Scorch Earthing, all the path to Timbuktu will slow them down. They'll take massive amounts of attrition. I think I got over 100,000 or um, 10k at least died marching here before they even hit Timbuktu. And all told over the war, I think it was about 100k died in this desert outside of combat. And that was just enough. Peaced out Castile, peaced out Portugal. Uh, the other time I just managed to get a white piece with Portugal because Castile didn't join. Um, they were engaged in other shenanigans. Um, at which point, you can, if you want, go after Portugal, but I recommend you kind of leave Portugal's colonies down here alive if you want. If you can take them in the peace deal, by all means, do so. At which point, the question becomes, do you want to go for uh, Abu Bakir II's ambition or not? If you do, it's time to start getting down uh, this left tree. You create your trade port. This goes up in size. You get this once you get Quest for the New World, which of course is the first in the exploration ideas. You'll be given a explorer, so don't hire one yourself. Um, you need three either um, light ships here or three heavy ships to explore. If you do, and you do it fast enough, you will gain a core on a province in South America, which is amazing. Uh, you can either conquer or at if you get to the level two, you can start colonizing Brazil. The times I did it, Portugal and Castile had already beaten me to the area, but you can usually find enough space to get five um, provinces, at which point you'll create your colonial nation. I tend to recommend you do the independent one, the one that tends to develop on its own, so it'll colonize and actually have a force limit. You should be strong enough. They will stay loyal. They'll never become massive like New Spain will. You need four in the area, but before then, as long as you have ten, you get an event, give you tons of money, another colonist and settlers chance, at which point racing to a different colonial area to get another colonial subject, uh, another two actually, because you probably have two separate ones, could easily complete Abu Bakir's ambition too. Make sure you steer the trade back to the Ivory Coast node. You can steer it from Brazil, meaning you want to colonize Brazil, Rio de Plata, and below if you can. Another way to expand, conquer the natives in the area. Um, be aware that some of them are surprisingly harder to conquer than you'd imagine. And you'll also be maybe fighting another war with Castile or Spain. Then you've completed that. Connection to the Maghreb. You actually need trade power up here. The easy way to do it is build a fleet of trade ships. And trade up there, at which point um, you will allow you a one-time purchase of a province in Europe through a decision. It's 2,000 gold at least to buy it, so make sure you save up. If you're lucky, you get a trade province. Uh, I didn't. I got Nice one time, and I think... I can't remember the other one. Uh, neither of which helped me to get trade, at which point the next mission, reach Europe, have 10 or more trade power. Pretty easy, build a massive trade fleet, send it to Strait of Gibraltar. If you own a province in Europe, you can go for Liguria. Um, get that, 33 trade power, trade range plus 10, helps a lot. Outside of that, uh, controlling the river, you'll get as you either annex subjects or conquer the area. I recommend subject as many people as you can. I managed to subject basically everyone. I think I conquered Benin, Oyo, and... Dagbon and everyone else I just subject in this entire area after I killed Songhai. So all of this was subjected. It was really quite easy. Had some trouble with going over Diplo points. Remember that your Amirs do have two privileges that are important. Uh, I don't think they're available at the moment. There is um, 
one that gives you two more diplomatic relation slots and low lowers liberty desire and there's another one that decreases annexation costs by five percent no longer gives you a diplomatic reputation penalty when you annex a subject but does increase liberty desire between those uh, you can annex everything start with your oldest vassals first and try to annex a lot of your existing ones before you add tons of new ones otherwise you end up with the annoying situation of you might have a rebellious vassal that is like 180 negative relations due to you annexing other vassals yeah i made that mistake uh but in the long run annex everybody you can even get wadai over here as a subject and uh, at which point you'll control this whole area if you're that strong i think i was fourth ranked great power without actually leaving sub-saharan africa Keep up in tech. Uh, you'll do very well there. Controlling the river will get you more trade dev cost. If you want to develop this area, you can dev these lands more. I didn't feel the need to do that. Um, trade power is nice. Gives you more permanent claims on this area. Down here, protecting West African trade is super hard. Uh, I actually didn't complete it in one of my runs. You have to get 85% trade in Timbuktu. It's pretty easy to get to about 75, but if there's any Muslim nations up here, or even Castile or Portugal, they will bleed off enough trade you can't get to 85. You either have to march up here, conquer, subject, whatever, to get to 85. If you do, though, you basically gain a stupid amount of trade modifiers in just this whole area, and you'll dominate the trade, at which point, if you've got Lots of money, lots of other stuff. You can do this. Prepare the pilgrimage. Your ruler will visit lands. You can get some cool modifiers. Be aware you need money. I won't spoil it for you. It's quite fun. Over here, Golden Ivory is unable to be completed until Diplotech 14 when you unlock trade stations, at which point um, it's pretty easy to do. It just cost 1,600 some odd money to do at that point. And you have to get any gold mines in the area here 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 and somewhere else uh to level 10 uh production i'm oh, sorry only those three to 10 production and you have to trade in ivory which you'll get because you'll probably be the only person with ivory provinces um you do you get a privilege which for five power cost on every power cost for the rest of the game Basically, gold mines won't give you inflation, and the odds of them depleting are almost none, at which point you can, if you want, massively develop these gold mines till you make, I was making either a, I, over 100 a month from gold. It was quite fun. Uh, so generosity is pretty easy. Just go to the Ottomans. If they've wiped out Egypt, give them a gift, and you'll complete this. You get a pilgrimage, at which point you can develop Mecca of all places. You can get a grand mosque or accounting house give it the grand mosque who cares at which point if you've got more dev than any european the odds are you won't because uh, either poland spain or the ottomans will likely be larger than you you can get morale of army navy and prestige okay and you'll have completed the mission tree it's hard to complete the mission tree you don't have to complete the mission tree for the missions but it is quite fun to do so i'll show you guys one of my empires here we go. Here's what one of my runs looked like. I had just completed the um, Mansa Musa by giving 10k worth of gold to the Ottomans. But as you can see, conquered Mali. Marrakesh survived. I wasn't able to take them out. If I was trying to get um, to complete the uh, project West African trade, I'd probably invade and kill them. But I needed them to, as a bulwark against Spain. I easily even vassalize Tafiliat up here. Um, I managed to sneak in two colonies if you wanted Abu Bakir's ambition. Basically, you get claims on, well, all of this. Just invade and conquer Brazil and Portugal's colonies if you need to. Downside, of course, is you have to fight Spain. Um, let's just run through idea groups and stuff, and that'll probably be it for the video. Idea groups and reforms. So, um, actually, before we do that, Here's what the dev looked like. As I said, I just devved this area here, and this was where I got institutions. Uh, another thing to point out, uh, this, the University of Sankor, the madrasa here, 
gives uh, institution spread and tech cost. And if you get absurdly wealthy, by all means, dev that. It will save you money in the long run. So in terms of idea groups, the first idea group I recommend is defensive. Uh, the morale bonus early on is huge. Also, the reduced land attrition stacks nicely with your Mali in one. It means wandering through low dev jungle monsoon tropical provinces doesn't destroy your armies. As you can see, I didn't finish any of the other idea groups. I didn't need to. You really only need to get to the fourth one in exploration so that you get the additional settlers. Quality here was to help me fight uh, Spain and Portugal, but I ended up not actually needing to fight them because I allied the Ottomans and yeah, that ended any attacks. The next one, uh, economic, I snagged at this point for reducing inflation. I took trade here because I was going to get the West African trade, but I figured I'd stop and do the guide instead. Uh, that will just help you get more trade. As you can see, at some point, I moved my trade uh, center to the Ivory Coast. I did Before I went to South Africa, I snagged all the centers of trade that I could in the Ivory Coast trade node. Combined with my fleet and other stuff, I've got over half of the trade here and in fact i'm propagating religion and uh making 45 from that but as you can see gold gives me 30 here uh i didn't go as hard into gold mines this run as i did my other run which is good because i didn't have to spend as much money reducing inflation but we have no inflation problems we're making 103 a month all the missions that were easy to do are done this is the only one i didn't get all these other two i could get in a moment Colonies going well. Conquest went well. Once I completed these ideas militarily, I'd be a lot stronger. But I am, in fact, still just catching up to Europe in terms of tech. I'm still behind. Um, that's going to, unfortunately, be the reality until global trade fires. Because everything prior to that is in Europe, usually. So it's very hard for you to match. Um, global trade, manufacturers, that's when you can catch up in tech and then actually go after Europe. In terms of reforms, this is going to change with the new update, Dominion, but from what I can see, most of these will stay where they are, so you can rely on that. You start off with Mansa Rule, Legitimacy, Stability, and Advisors is nice. Second one, you've got choices here. I recommend no Strength and Noble Privileges for the Manpower, because unfortunately you don't have great manpower as Molly um, due to Dev. Curtailing, you don't need the tax, you've got gold. Noble Officer Corps is nice, but you're risking getting close to uh, your nobility having too much influence. And do you really need the professionalism and the tradition compared to more troops? With the nerf to manpower, it's better. The other, other ones aren't worth taking here. The next one, you've got a choice between Expanded Royal Court to get more reforms at the cost of influence, or Decentralized to get loyalty. This run, I didn't solve the disaster as quickly, so I needed this one to get the loyalty enough so I could finish the disaster. Expand Temple Riots is easily the best one here uh, on this tree. The other one are okay. These two just mess up your relations with the states. Balance of Power, Loyalty. This one gives you 33 more tax wherever you build your temples and reduced unrest. And reduced advisor costs, easily the best one in the row. Gives you tons of money. This next one... You can get free policies, boost relations, or at 20 corruption a year, or 0.2 corruption a year, you get plus one in your monarch skills. The best one here, you've got the gold to pay down the corruption. If you don't, the next reform, curtail the burgers, you want to take this corruption reduction one. We'll make this only 10, way more man, or two, much more manageable. Middle one here, the best one is royal decree. You could make an argument for general estates. Uh, if you want to get through reforms and loyalty faster. But if you're going to conquer later, absolutism is the way to go. The next one, you've got options. I recommend curtail if you did dynastic. Otherwise, empower the burgers is the way to go by and large. Or embrace free trade for the institution spread and trade power abroad. The other ones here aren't amazing. You don't need inflation reduction other than economic ideas. And none of these other ones are amazing. Mercantile might help getting 85, but beyond that, it's not as good as empowering the burgers. Treaties of government. If you take two treaties of government, you reduce your corruption. If you've done dynastic, you're down to 0.5. Easily manageable. Otherwise, um, 
you've got options of which to pick. I recommend you either do social contract so that you can take heretic and heathen problem provinces or uh, the six liveries de la republique for unrest and separatism. Leviathan, it's only not really worth it. The next one, I am the state. L'Estat c'est moi is better than regional representation. Sorry, French speakers. Kingdom for the people and divine right, not as good. Definitely, I am the state. You'll need it by this point because you'll be get hitting your government capacity uh, or you'll already be over it. And for the final one, if you can, right to petition gives plus one diplo monarch skill. No stability loss on death, which if you think about it, is about 100 admin power every monarch, which is worth it. The other two are free policy, eh, and political absolutism, admin efficiency, absolutism, only for mass conquering nations, which Mali really isn't one. Unless you want to be, but the reality is you can complete both of their missions, mainly peacefully. You might have a war with Portugal and Spain, and of course, conquering your neighbors or annexing them. Outside of that, pretty easy run. Mali looks good. If you need another route to expand, rather than just sitting like I did, by all means, go invade the Ethiopian area, or to help you with your trade power, go conquer the Congo. They tend to be fetish. They can be easily conquered. Once you get into here, a lot of these can actually be vassalized. I did another run, and I did do the vassalization. Or you can invade places like Kilwa and capture even more gold mines, because who doesn't want all the gold mines? There's an achievement for getting lots of gold mines, if I remember, and uh, Molly <laughs> can get pretty close to it. Anyhow, that is Molly EU4 in a nutshell. It shouldn't change much from the upcoming Dominion expa DLC expansion, so uh, this should help you guys. Hopefully this helps you actually solve the disaster, uh, which is very painful. So try and basically restart um, until you can pull off what I did, which is gain estate favors without revolts, it will make your life 10 times easier. If you want a challenge, don't solve the disaster that easily and then rage quit five minutes later. Uh, anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, check out my other EU4 stuff or my other guides of other games. If you've got any questions or recommendations for guides, by all means, leave them below. And I'll see you guys all in another Let's Play or another video. Bye for now.